Hallelujah. Praise God. I know most of you are thinking, man, God's already doing something in me right now. Amen. Oh, we're just confirming what he's doing. <laughs> I'll lift your hands and get a drink, will you? Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your feet if you have to. I don't care. Just get a drink. Praise be to God. <laughs> oh, Master, we thank you. 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 And we thank you. We thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> God's doing something. Isn't it nice that he's always doing something? No matter what. He's always doing something. Amen. He's the God of move. He's the God of power. He's the God of love. He's the God of grace. He's God. And we're not. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You know, there's something great about worshiping. What it does is invites God. When you worship, you're inviting the Lord. There's something wonderful about invitations. You know that invitations are opportunities for visitations? Hallelujah. Say that with me. An invitation is an opportunity for visitation. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Matthew 22. Praise God. So while you and I are worshiping the Lord, you know what we're doing? We're inviting him, aren't we? So if we're inviting him, you're expecting a visitation, aren't you? Now, the problem that some people have is we expect God to show up in lightning bolts and clouds of glory. I mean, and sometimes I do. I mean, you know. I'm expecting that. I'm expecting something to happen. But sometimes he shows up in subtle ways and all kinds of things. First of all, you can never tell God how he should show up. Amen? Now, you may have expectations, but you've got to accept how he shows up and be grateful for it. Amen. Matthew 22. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's starting at verse 1. Are you all there? <laughs> Would you all read it with me, please? And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were what? Invited to the wedding. And they were what? Not willing to come. You know, you got to understand something. How many times, see, an invitation for salvation is an opportunity for a visitation. Amen. So there are, how many times have somebody's given you an invitation and you went and you, you had a visitation, right? So invitations are opportunities for visitations. But now I'm talking about an area where we want a visitation from the Lord. Well, see, sometimes God gives you an invitation to strategically position you to get a visitation. Amen? So we see here that these individuals were given an invitation to come to a wedding, but they what? They weren't willing to come. And again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. Second invitation. But they made what? Light of it. Light of it. You know how many people make light of coming together in fellowship? They make light of it. They're too busy with their schedules. You know what they do? They miss the visitation. They make light of it, don't they? Now listen. Again, he sent them out, right? And they made light of it and went their what? Their ways. One to his own farm and another to his business. 
Oh, hallelujah. Never let your job interfere with visitations from God. Never. When you reject visitation invitations from the Lord, you open yourself to a devil. Destruction. What's the devil come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. So how many times has God tried to invite you? What's he trying to do? He's inviting you for a visitation to cause an escape from a visitation from the devil. Amen? Why? Because he's always strategically positioning you. Because position is everything in the kingdom. That's how you defeat wars, isn't it? That's how you have victory. That's how you uh, make wave escape. That's how you escape disasters and so forth. Amen? Oh, praise God. Now, in verse 6, would you read it with me? And the rest seized their servants, treated them spitefully, and what? Killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. Okay, we kill all them. Let's get some new ones. But those who were invited were not worthy now, were they? In other words, let me share something with you. When you reject an invitation from the Lord, Are you hearing? When you je reject an invitation from the Lord, there sometimes is another invitation, but the first invitation is not the same as the first visitation. Are you with me? Once you miss the invitation, it's never the same. Never. I I are you hearing? In other words, when that visit invitation comes from the Lord and you miss that and you reject that invitation, the next invitation that comes from the Lord will not be the same visitation that the first one was going to be. Do you get it? Amen. Now look at He said what now? He says now they're unworthy. Now they've rejected the invitation twice. Now they're unworthy. Now he says, okay. Therefore, go into the highways and ask as many as you find invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Now you've got to understand that Jesus was speaking to who? Jews. See, they understood what he was saying. He was speaking to who? Jews, wasn't he? Amen. So they understood about the wedding, and they understood that he was talking about them. That's why they didn't, didn't like him so much, you know what I mean? <laughs> they had a hard time with Jesus because <laughs> he was always exposing. <laughs> he was always exposing. Everywhere Jesus went, man, he exposed. <laughs> Therefore, go out, go out and find and invite others. So the servants went out into the highways, gathered together all whom they found, both good and bad. In verse 11. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a what? Wedding garment. Let me share something with you. When God invites you, he dresses you. There is something specifically that he puts on you when you accept the invitation. Why? Because there's a change always coming. See, the change started when you accepted it. Are you, are you hearing me? Why? Because before the visitation comes, he prepares you. So once you accept the invitation, he begins to prepare you for the visitation. And again, I'm sharing with you that the visitation is not always according to the way you expect it. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Now, so in verse 12, so he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are what? The word called means invited. For many are what? Invited. But few are what? Chosen. In fact, the word tells us that there are those who are called, chosen, and faithful. Called, chosen, and faithful. So when there is an invitation given to you, God is always trying to get you into a place for a visitation. Are you hearing? Praise God. 
Go to uh, Hebrews 10. Now, many refuse these invitations, and but you know what? When you refuse an invitation from the Lord, you accept an invitation from the devil. Amen. Hebrews 10. Is everybody there? Glory. Hallelujah. How's everybody today? You all right? <laughs> In verse 19. Would you read it with me? Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us, what, draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us, what? Hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promises faithful. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not what? Forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some but exhorting one another and do so much the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, he said, do not forsake assembling. Does everybody understand it? Why? Those are invitations, aren't they? They're invitations. See, now, when you accept that invitation, we here have accepted the invitation. God sends out an invitation for people to come on Sundays, right? <laughs> Comes on Tuesday, whatever it is. When we miss an invitation from the Lord, there is a visitation. Now, God is going to bring a visitation to us. Sometimes it's a fresh manna. Sometimes it's a fresh move of his spirit. Sometimes there's always something happens. Why? He's always inviting us and asking us, are we willing to change? Are we willing to change? See, the invitation says, welcome to the house of change. <laughs> and I'm not talking pocket change. Amen. It says, come. Come, I'm inviting you. So what we must be willing to do is participate in accepting not only the invitation, but whatever the visitation is. So we accept it in that degree and prepare our hearts to receive so that there can be a change in us. But see, sometimes people get an invitation and they show up with no expectation. None. They just sit there like a piece of the furniture. And do nothing and they get nothing amen i mean you know most of the time people are excited come on when we were in the world we got invited to such and such a party woohoo you know i mean man you know everybody go out and get prepared yes you know they they cook they buy all the booze they buy all the dope they buy all of these things when they're out in the world man they went through great lengths for the invitation for the devil. They decked themselves out and came out and showed up with all kinds of garments. Some of them partial garments. <laughs> Man, we were willing to get in the presence of the devil, let me tell you. <laughs> to fill, fill the lust. <laughs> the lust of the world. But now we as children of the most high God, God sends us specific invitations for a special visitation for a change. Every time you accept that, there's a change. He prepares you, begins to prepare, he dresses you. See, and then when you leave, it's all knit, it's all pressed, it's all nice and clean. You know? He doesn't mind if you bring your dirty laundry either. He says, come as you are. You know, some of us show with vans and U-Hauls. I understand, but he's willing to take care of it all. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Mobile homes, you know. <laughs> Praise God, here I come. Praise God. Come on, we're all dirty laundry family. Amen. But thank God that he, he, he does it. He's got the greatest solution in the world. Dry cleaning and everything. He does it all. Amen? 
Now, not forsaking. So when we get an invitation, we do not want to reject it. Amen? We don't want to reject it. Why? Because we, meet, we miss something specifically that God has for us. That God has. Why? And what's it for? A change. And what you got to understand something. The invitations are for a visitation because he wants to prepare a change. And it's because it's something he's about to do. You know how many people, and I'm going to share this with you. Many people backslide and fall because they reject the invitation when God was trying to get them an invita a visitation of some revelation so that they can escape what the devil was about to do in their life. And they didn't escape because they reject the invitation. Are you hearing me? Why? Because there was a specific revelation coming down from the throne room of God because the Lord sees what the devil's doing. And he's going, listen, over here. Here's an invitation. I want to get you this information. He says, the worst thing is what? My people are what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, how are you going to get knowledge? Amen. And, and I'm talking now, revelation is fresh knowledge, isn't it? It's something that God is saying, I'm doing something right now because the enemy is attacking in this area. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to John 6. John chapter 6. Praise God. See, an invitation can bring deliverance. An invitation can bring healing. Amen? Bring salvation. You don't know. Could be a, a direction that you need specifically. Could be a way of escape. Oh, hallelujah. John 6. Is everybody there? John chapter 6 and verse 41. Praise you, Lord. Then the Jews, in verse 41, then the Jews com then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. You think Jesus was the invitation? Amen. <laughs> he was definitely an invitation. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the father sent him an invitation. And I will raise him up at the last day. Do you see this? Amen. Amen. <laughs> It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Amen? So you got to see here, he says, listen, they are taught by who? God. So when you get an invitation from the Lord, that means there's something specifically that he's trying to get to you. Now, even though that we're assembling together, you know, because we have a tendency carnally to think, well, Maybe that's not for me. Maybe what's coming is for somebody else. No, everything we get is for us. Even the person that preaches behind this pulpit is for that person too. Amen? As long, if it's fresh manna, let me tell you, you're going to know right then and there. You know, God is trying to get some. Well, you know, how many times has the devil tried to lure people away and try to move them out of position? Why? Because God is trying to get something to them. For change. Everything is change. Why? Because the moment you were birthed, you were headed on to death. You've been changing ever since that first breath. And ever since you got a new breath from heaven, you've been changing also. Now you're changing into his, his image instead of his. Right? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Go to John 12. Praise God. Glory.
glory. Everybody there? <laughs> Thank you, Master. In verse 27, John 12, 27. Would you read it with me, please? Jesus said, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I came to this hour. Glor Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had, had heard what? It had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world, and the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will what? Draw all peoples to myself. So Jesus was the invitation, wasn't he? Amen. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. Praise God. Then the people answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus answered them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of the light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Oh, hallelujah. So we see here that he was the invitation, wasn't he? Amen. The invitation to light and truth. Praise God. Turn to 1 Corinthians 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Invitations are what? Opportunities for what? Visitations. Praise God. You know, I, um, too many individuals rely on experiences, their strengths, their knowledge, and their understandings. I'll never forget when the Lord, when I was invited, and this all started by an invitation, I was invited to go with an individual to a drug program and he was speaking and I've shared the story already so he was invited and he invited me and I had peace about it I said okay Lord I wasn't sure where I was going and he began to speak and when he got done with his testimony and he pointed to me and said okay now guy will pray for you now I was taken right out of my colonel position because the first thing was, I am a baby in Christ, man. I, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I hadn't been born that long. <laughs> and here I'm going to pray for all these people. I mean, it was my first thought. But then it came to me, wait a minute, don't rely on you. That's not you anyways. So I, yeah, praise God. I accepted that invitation. And I began to pray for people. And God's presence filled that place. And people were weeping and all kinds of stuff. And uh, so I left, and I just said, you know, Lord, whatever you want me to do. And they called me the next day or two days later, and I said, listen, we want you to come here and pastor this place. I thought, well, Lord, am I? I, I? And he said, hey, man, get out of yourself, will you? It ain't you. Are you going to accept my invitation or not? So I accepted it unknowingly what was going on didn't feel qualified for anything see when God gives you an invitation not only is there going to be a visitation but he puts you, puts you in a position to expose you he puts you in a position to deliver you he puts you in a position to heal you he puts you in a position to use you I said, use you. You don't use him. 
Amen. See, we come to a place sometimes where we're thinking, how can I use God? Well, we, we say, how can God use me? But in true reality, what's behind that scene is, how can I use God? See, because you don't have to worry about a thing if you're going to let God use you. Are you getting this? You don't have to concern yourself about nothing if you're going to let God use you. But if you're going to use God, you're concerned. Man, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this. I don't know if that. What? Me, myself, and I. See, when you reject a visit invitation from the Lord, you just got exposed. I, are you getting that? Now, there are invitations that are not from God, and you better reject them. And those are the ones that are going to promote flesh. Amen? Now, anything can promote flesh, can it? I, are you getting that? I mean, anytime you get invited to something that can promote flesh, but that's how you interpret it. So you better discern, and that determines where you are, whether this invitation is from the Lord or from the devil. Amen? Now, if you've been invited to, a, to go witness into bars, I don't believe it. Are you hearing me? Not why it's full-blown going on. Because ain't nobody going to listen to you anyways. What's going to end up happening is you're going to sit down and get messed up. Hello? Yeah, man, we're getting ready to go witness in these bars. Praise God. Go ahead, I'll see you. You better make sure that place is closed and the only thing you're witnessing to is the people who are cleaning up. Hello? I'm telling you, there's a lot of nutty and granola people out there, nutty and fruity. And, and, and the whole thing is, is they get people in trouble and don't even realize it. So you must discern whether this invitation is coming from God or not. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Where are we at? <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. You know, you got to remember that the Bible warns us, it says that many antichrists will come. And what are they going to do? They're going to invite you to say that what? The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is there. And Jesus said, don't go. Don't go. It ain't me. It's not me. First Corinthians chapter one, right? Verse 26. Would you read it? For you see your calling, brethren. Now, now you know, your calling. Is everybody there? First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. Okay. Now, your calling is a part of your what? Invitation, isn't it? Come on, do you get this? Your calling is a part of your what? Your invitation. Amen. Now look at it. He says, for you see your calling, you see your invitation. Brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are what? Called or what? Invited. But God has chosen the boneheads. The <laughs> Praise God. Hey, you're... Hey, listen, you're, you're, you're looking at the X number one bonehead of the country. I said X. <laughs> but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the what? Wise. And God has chosen or invited the what? Weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Do you understand? Do you see this now? Do you get this? See, your invitation has got nothing to do what you can do. Your invitation has got everything to do what you can't do. Ooh. And, and, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. How many have been in here and been despised? Hallelujah. 
which are despised, God has what? Chosen or invited. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that... Now, there it is. The things that are what? That are not. No way. Those are the no way things. There's no way that God could fix this. There's no way that this. There's no way. I mean, come on. They were looking at Jesus going, wait a minute. Aren't you Joseph's son? No way. You know what you're claiming saying that you're the bread of life? Yeah, right. There's just no way. No way could he have invited all of us who were in here who were rejected, boneheads. Hello? Forsaken, abandoned, servants of darkness. There's just, it's impossible. But we're here. Amen? That's all we did was accept the invitation. We didn't look at what we could do. We didn't look at what we had. We didn't look at anything else but accept the invitation. Most of us, I don't know when I accepted the invitation, I didn't even know who he was. I didn't even know who he was. And I got an invitation. I analyzed my condition. I figured, hey, I haven't been invited in a party in a while. Because <laughs> I didn't have anything to bring anymore. The only thing I had was what to take. So I figured I uh, must have take this invitation. And when I accepted the invitation, I changed. Man, did I change. Ask my wife, I changed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now, he chose us in verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence. In other words, nothing to do with your strength. Nothing to do with your knowledge and your intellect. Nothing to do with your experiences. Nothing to do with you. Just accept the invitation and die. Glory. <laughs> John 6. Is everybody okay? Uh oh, now the Holy Ghost is bringing up to remember it's all the invitations that you, you, you rejected. Oh man, I mean, some of us have stacks of them. <laughs> it's okay, throw it in with your dirty laundry. John 6, glory to God. <laughs> Is everybody there? In verse 68. But Simon Peter answered the Lord. He said, Lord, to him who, sh who shall, he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, and did I not what? Choose you. Did I not what? Invite you. The twelve and one of you is a what? Devil. Oh. One is yet the devil. <laughs> he spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. Who he would what? Betray. How many times have you accepted the invitation and then betrayed him? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So we see Jesus was inviting all the uh, disciples, became apostles. and He changed them, didn't he? Everyone that accepted his invitation, what? Changed if they were willing to cooperate. Now. His whole thing was started out with a visit invitation, wasn't it? First of all, he was the invitation from God Almighty, right? God the Father. Then he went around and invited. He took tax collector, fisherman, right? All of, he went and what? Invited him. He said what? Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Those are all invitations from the throne room of God. 
follow me. You know, we begin to not look in the spirit about these invitations that come from God. We begin to look at them carnally. Amen? Carnally. And we miss God. Because when you reject an invitation, you miss God. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Go to Luke 24. So we have invitations, visitations, and change. Everyone say, invitations, visitations, and change. Invitations, visitations, change. So don't take your next visit invitation lightly. Amen. Glory. Where did I say to go? Luke 24. Okay, you there yet? Luke 24. Oh, praise God. Sometimes God will tap you on the shoulder and invite you to come and pray. Come on, I got something for you. Huh? Who is that? He's saying, come out of your nothing box, will you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke 24. <laughs> and verse uh, 13. Is everybody there? Thank you. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same, at the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem, and they talked together all these things which had happened. So it was while they were conversed, they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So it was while they were, oh, man. but their eyes were what? Restrained so that they did not know him and he said to them what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad and one of those whose name was Cle Clophius, Cleophas answered and said to him are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and have you not known the things which happened there in these days and he said to them what things so they said to him, the things which concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed in word before him, before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we are hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, a certain woman of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive and certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the woman had said but him they did not see then he said to them "O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe and all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things which concerning him. Now, did they have a visitation? Yes, they did. They didn't even know it was him. They didn't even know it was him. And then he opened the scriptures and everything. And they even pleaded with him to stay longer. But they still didn't know it was him <laughs> until they broke bread. And when they broke bread with him, he left. So many times, so many times, we missed the visitation. Even though we've accepted the invitation because of our false expectations. Has everybody got it? Now, listen, when you accept an invitation from the Lord, it, he, he not only puts something in you, but sometimes you don't even get it yet. Amen? And it seems like, well, you know, I got something, but I don't know what's what. You know, I, and then all of a sudden, a few days later, the visitation comes. And it's like, whoa, 
that was the Lord. You know, sometimes some of us take two or three weeks to get it. Yeah, that was Jesus. I, I got it now. My wife used to be three days later. But now she's right on key. Hallelujah. Sometimes a few days advance. But praise God. She knows the invitation is coming. Now see, the Holy Ghost always nudges you and say, the invitation is coming. Do you understand that? Why? Because he tells us all things to come. But see, we can get so busy with all of our foolishness and all worldliness and all soulish arena because, of, man, when people are in the soulish, they miss God all the time. Because if it doesn't feel right, If it just doesn't feel, you know, and there's more important things in my life than just accepting a visita invitation from God. Hello. If it doesn't feel right. Well, we're trying to keep things, we're trying to do, and we're trying, you know. Too much family orientation, too much business orientation, too much material orientation. All of these things which clog the mind when the spirit is trying to hey here's an invitation or the devil tries to do this too he tries to deter you or move you in another direction in thoughts he'll even send someone to say something and move your focus in another area and the invitation is coming and you'll miss it You'll miss it. Are you hearing? You know, the Spirit of the Lord has sent out many invitations for people to come in the presence of God on a Friday night. Amen? But because of false witnesses that have said things about Friday night, are you hearing me? People are afraid to come because of whatever. They think it's a cult. You know what I'm saying? They think, you know, we're thieves. They think whatever. Whatever the devil's told them. I, I, are you hearing? So what do they do? They miss the invitation. They miss the visitation. They miss change. And they stay stuck in the puddle of mud. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. So, you know, sometimes you just got to die. And you've got to accept what is and quit trying to figure it out. Hello? Are you all right? Go to Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Invitations are opportunity what? Visitations. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessings from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Let me share something with you. He's talking about human hindrances. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Those are human hindrances. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors. In other words, get rid of them. And the king of glory shall what? Come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Get rid of those human hindrances. Get rid of them. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Human hindrances. Wow. They 
reject the invitations from the Lord. Go to Acts 1. Praise God. In verse 4. Acts 1 and verse 4. Is everybody there? And being assembled together with them, he what? He commanded them. Not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. That was an invitation, wasn't it? Sometimes commands are invitations from the Lord. Amen? Every command from the Lord is an invitation. Are you hearing? What was he trying to do? He was inviting them to get baptized in the Holy Spirit, wasn't he? He was commanding them. We know that many rejected the invitation. And they miss the power of God and the presence of God. Because he said in verse 8, he said, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. But many, and now let me show it to you, there are many places who will not carry that additional invitation. Because they've rejected themselves, so they pass it on. Are you hearing? See, what you reject, you will pass on. Every invitation you've rejected, you will pass it on. Until amends is made. Until you finally accept that one. Because you can't give what you don't have. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Go to John 14. John 14 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me, please? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many, what? Mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will, what? Come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know where the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, what? Except for through me. So he was even saying, listen, I've got an invitation for you to come into this wonderful place of living for eternity. Amen? Go to Ephesians 2. Hallelujah. So people miss the invitation of deliverance, healing. They miss the invitation of manna. They miss the invitation of the visitation of God. Do not let your human character our carnal character assists your rejection or even your experiences assist your rejection of a visitation from the Lord. Where did I say to go? Ephesians 2. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 14. For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances. So as to create in himself one new man from the two. Thus making peace. And that he might reconcile or invite them both to God in one body. To the cross thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached to you who were afar off, and to those who are near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. So for me and you, the invitation is constantly open to the Father. Do you understand that? It's constant. It's not a one-time invitation. It's constant, even when we blow it. 
It's constant. Never closes. And I want to close in Ephesians 1. Simple teaching. Invitations are opportunities for what? Visitations. Glory to God. In verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the what? Beloved. In him we have what? Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth in him. Hallelujah. So we know that this invitation has gone out. He's going to collect. <laughs> and all those who have accepted it will all be gathered together. Do not let your carnal human hindrances cause you to reject an invitation from the Lord. Because where there's an invitation, there's a visitation, and there's what? Change. See, too many times we want to change to accept the invitation. Amen? Unworthiness. Fear. All of these things that the carnal hindrances prevent us from accepting the invitation amen i was invited to go to cambodia i don't know what's going to happen but god knows listen i had a dream one time and i want to share this before we close and it was in the auditorium with a boxing ring and i've shared this before And I found myself having a robe on like a boxer. And I found, I'm, I'm looking at my hands, I'm going, man, there's a boxing glove on this hand. And I'm walking to the ring and I'm looking at myself going, man, I'm not in shape to box. I haven't practiced or done anything. I'm thinking this. And then the Lord shows up next to me. And he's putting a glove on my other hand and tying it up. And I said, but for you, I'll go. And I'd start walking and I'd start looking at myself again. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not in shape for this. And then I would see the Lord again. But, but for you, I'll, I'll go. Do you understand that? And I knew I was going to go doing some battle. But my own hindrance and carnal understanding because I was invited to go into the ring. And let me tell you, you're not to go into the ring unless God sends you. Never go into a ring without God sending you. And I was thinking, man, I'm not, I'm not in shape for this. And, you know. But they kept coming to me, but for you, I'll go. See, I had to start relinquishing all of me my understanding and my way, my way of thinking, everything that was associated carnality I had to relinquish and I went in for him thank God I woke up before I got in the ring <laughs> Amen. I would have won anyways because it wasn't me Amen. <laughs> but that dream came to pass that day I woke up and I told my wife about the dream and that day, the Lord sent me, and man, I was in a ring. Because she had a dream also about three foxes that attacked her. And I was sent to a place of a bunch of religious individuals. And I was in a ring. And I was drained when I left there. Whew. But I left there. I made it home and was victorious. 
Because Jesus sent me and not me. Don't reject the invitation because there's a visitation and a change awaiting each and every one. Amen. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we repent for every invitation we've rejected for, to you. We ask for your forgiveness. Lord, make way. Make way, Lord, to restore. Make way to reconcile. Make way. We ask, Master, right now as we repent and that for the, all rejecting those invitations, that you'd bring a fresh invitation, a fresh visitation, and a fresh change. And Lord, grant us the discernment, the humbleness, and the wisdom, the strength to say yes to you, and the power to say no to the devil. Lord, we promise to give you all the glory. Prepare our hearts as we accept your communion. And let there be an invitation of communion that there may be a visitation and change as we commune with you in Jesus' name.